So this is the night of crying. This is the day of the collective crying of Am Yisrael, the Jewish people. And we've been crying for many years. When did it all begin? That Bochay Sif Kabbalayla, Chazal tell us, it began when the Miraglam came back, when the spies came back. And Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu in Sefer Devarim reveals the underlying cause for all of the crying. Of course, we were very disappointed. We were very hurt. But Moshe Rabbeinu says, Vateragnu ba'ohalechem, vatomru, we were complaining in our tents. Why should we have known what was really going on behind the scenes? And we were saying, "Besinus Hashem Eisano, Hosi Ano Me'eres Mitzrayim." Besinus Hashem Eisano. Listen to those words. Hashem hates us, and because Hashem hates us, because Hashem is disgusted with us, Hosi Ano Me Mitzrayim. He took us out of Mitzrayim. If you want to understand, regardless of the Jewish people, when did that begin? And at any time in life, when does the gullus of an individual, an individual Jew, when does that begin? It's with that feeling, that terrible, terrible mistake of besinus Hashem Osano. Hashem hates us. Hashem doesn't want to have anything to do with us. Besinus Hashem Osi. I've done so many things in my life that are not good that are ugly, that Hashem simply doesn't want to have anything to do with me. And from that point on, I begin to cry. We see this over and over again. The Zohar Kodesh tells us what happened when we went into Bavel, when we went down to Bavel. al Nahar was Bavel, David Amel said, al Nahar was Bavel, by the rivers of Bavel, going into Bavel. Sham Yashavnu, Gam Bachinu, there we sat and we were crying. Mizachreinu es Zion. When we remembered Zion, so the Zohar Kodesh says, I'm translating into the into Lashon Hakodesh, the translation at the beginning of Shmos. It's hard to imagine, picture that. For the first time, we were thrown out. We left Eretz Yisrael, and we were taken down in chains, and we were sitting for a few minutes, catching our breath by the by the river of Bavel. So the Zohar says, "Kasha nichnesu legalus bavel, savru she'ein lehem oid kiim la olamim." We really thought that we were finished as a people. Shrei Hakadosh Baruch Hu ozav osam. We felt that Hashem didn't want to have anything to do with us anymore. Hashem ozav osam. That Hashem left us. He was finished with us. V'lo yashgiach aleihem oid la olamim, and that He would never ever care about us or look at us again. So try to think of this. We were in chains. We had been beaten. We were tortured. We didn't know where our wives, our children, the children, the, the kids, the families, the grandparents. Everybody was separated. We were taken away from our land. We didn't know what was going to be in the future. We didn't have anything to eat. We didn't have anything to drink. But the the real, real one thing that was breaking us. Shem Yashav Nevagam Bachinu, the Zohar is telling us, was that underlying feeling of Besinus Hashem Aysan, that Hashem is done with us. He doesn't want to have anything to do with us. Why else would he have thrown us out from Israel? He's sick and tired of us. It's Besinus Hashem Aysan. So when we say these words, B'zachreinu es Sion, we cry and we remember Yerushalayim, we remember Sion. We have to ask ourselves, what was it like in Zion? What are we missing? What is Zion? What once was, and what is it that's going to be in Mitzvah Hashem soon? By Maimon HaSinai, when we stood at HaSinai, we had a taste of that song of Zion, Shiru Lono Mishir Zion. We had a taste of that. We felt in the most unbelievable way connected to HaKadosh Baruch we felt Hashem's love. The whole Shir Hashirim, the whole Shir Hashirim is a description of the gagum of the longing 
to feel that connection, to feel that love. And in the first parak, when it says the words, Yishakenim and Yishikai Spiu, Hashem, we're asking you to kiss us with the kisses of your lips. Rashi says, Al Shem Shanosulhem Tarosa Vidiba Imarim Panim Al Panim. That once upon a time when we were young, when we started our journey with Hashem, He kissed us, He spoke to us, Panim Al Panim. It was so clear to us that He loved us. Rashi says, and that love is that love is more important to us, is more dear to us than anything else in the world. And Hashem is Baruch promised us that this will happen again when Mashiach comes, it'll be clear to us. So we're asking Yeshakenim and the Shikas Pihu. But there was a time, Hever, that we did feel this. Not only at Harsi night, there was a time that as a people and each and every one of us individually felt with absolute certainty that Hashem adores us, Hashem loves us, that we're connected to Him. When we were in the Beis HaMikdash, when we were in the Beis HaMikdash, Shiru Lona Mishir Tzion, you know, what was that song of Yushalayim? Shiru Lona Mishir Tzion. There are a lot of wonderful composers and musicians and they sing songs about Yushalayim. But Dovr Malach said, Shiru Lona Mishir Tzion to sing a song of Yushalayim. What's the song of Yushalayim? We say in the evening, Bavad is Beis HaMikdash, Nismach Kulonu. And the Avod of the Beis HaMikdash, Nismach Kulonu. What's the song of the Beis HaMikdash? What's the song of Yishalayim? Ahavas Olam Tovi Lohem. Ahavas Olam. That Hashem, that you love us with an eternal love. Those were the songs of Yish that we heard in Yishalayim. That's what we felt when we were in the Beis HaMikdash. O Bris Ovas Labonim Tizka. The Beis HaMikdash... Shalom Melech says, is, ahava. It was inlaid. It was filled. It was saturated with ahava, with love. nafshi. Hashem, libi Libi When we walked into Beis Mikdash, you had a year, there was a Jew that was broken, was totally broken. He thought, my wife hates me. My kids don't want to talk to me. My, my, my Rebbe is disgusted with me. What am I going to do? I have nothing in my life. And he would somehow manage to crawl up to the Harabais and he'd walk into the Beis Mikdash. And in that place, he would feel a havas oilam haftan, or Hashem alokainam, he would feel a havas oilam haftih, he would feel Hashem's love. He would feel that love of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. When we would come up for the, for the regal, Chazal tells us we would come alila regal. And, and it was an unbelievable thing that they would pull aside that separation and they would show us and we would see the crew of him. We would see the crew of them, they would be looking at each other with love. They would see the crew of them, mamish, together, holding each other. And they would call out to the Jews who came, Ali Lerega, Ru'uchi Baschem Lefneha, Lefneha Mokem. Everybody take a look and see how Hashem is Baruch loves you. Because you know, the crew of them, where Azarcha and the Keva was like a chasn and Kala, a boy and a girl. And the chasn is Hashem, and the Kala is Knesset Yisrael. And all of us saw in the clearest way when we would come to Beis Migdash. We would see in the clearest way. Look how Hashem Baruch loves you, like a chasnan kala, a havas oilam. Ever since the time of the Churban Beis Hamikdash, that continuation of that terrible night of Bachos Sivka Belayla when we cried, when the Miraglim came back because we believed, we didn't say it openly, but in our tents, in our hearts, we believed. That Hashem doesn't really care for us. He doesn't love us. Ever since that, that horrible night, which led to the Chum Beis Hamikdash, there's this terrible hest upon him, a terrible concealment of Hashem's love. The Lev Ha'Elyon, that heart of Hashem, is hidden from us. That Ahavas Oilam. That Ahavas Oilam Hav Tonu Hashem Elokein, that eternal, unbelievable love, that Haben Yakir Li Ephraim Im Yelat Shashuim, that Vera Ram Tonu Mekol Halashayinus is hidden from us. We don't see it. And that song of Yushalayim, that's the Shir Tzion. That song of Yushalayim is something that we can't hear anymore. We hear a lot of music, but we don't hear the song of the Beis Hamikdash. We don't hear the song of Hashem's Baruch's love. 
And as a result of that, we live in Galus, thinking, B'sinas Hashem Aysano. B'sinas Hashem Aysano. Now, we already know that the Navi expressed this. The Navi expressed this. That even though Hashem tells us over and over through the Naviim and in Torah and through Chazal that He does love us, but the Navi said, "Vatomer Tzion Azavani Hashem." Golos is the story of Vatomer Tzion Azavani Hashem. That Tzion, that Yerushalayim, is no longer singing her song. Yerushalayim no longer hears that song of God's love, of Hashem's love. Instead, it's Vatomer Tzion. Azavani Hashem, va Hashem Shechani, va Tomer Tzion Azavani Hashem. Instead of singing the song of Tzion, instead of hearing the zmiras of the Levim and the Beis Hamikdash, each and every one of us walks around with this feeling of Azavani Hashem, va Hashem Shechani, that Hashem has left me, Hashem has forgotten me. The way that we felt when we went down into Marvel. It's the same way. Bavel, Melech Bavel means the king of Bilbul of confusion. And the great confusion in the world is that we think that God doesn't love us. We think for sinners at Besinas Hashem, my son. So even though Hashem says right there in the Pasik, it says, So Hashem says in the words of the Navi, What do you mean? What do you mean that I have forgotten you? Can a mother forget the baby that she carried in her womb? Does a mother ever forget that child, that baby that she carried in her womb? And Gamela Tishkachna, Hashem says that even if there could be such a thing, that a mother would forget her child. But Hashem swore to us, I'll never forget you. I will never ever forget you. But everybody knows, Chever Becholz us that the Metzias of life, the life that we're living in, we feel contradicts those beautiful words that the Navi said. And when each one of us is going through life, um, it's not so posh it. It's not so posh it to feel those words of, of that I'll never forget you. It's not so easy to feel Hashem's love, Ahavas Elmaftanu. Because the Metzius of life often contradicts those words. What we see in our lives and what we feel in our lives often contradicts those words of Ahavas Eilam Haftanu Hashem Alakena. You know, I was thinking about how, you know, Yeshiva Sakota, where's Yeshiva Sakota? The Chaver from Yeshiva Sakota working so hard to bring all of us together. Where is Yeshiva Sakota? You know, you walk outside, you look out the window, you see. You see the Harabayas. You remember there by the Harabayas. You're there by the Kotel. You see the Harabayas. And at that place of the Harabayas, there's the the temple of the Ishmaelim is there, of those who despise us, of those who hate us. Why is it that they can't stand? Why is it the Ishmaelim and the rest of the world can't fagin the Jewish people, can't let us have the Harabayas? Why is it that there's so much sugar to try to somehow hide, to cover up any trace of that place of Hashem's love? Where Hashem's love was clear to us. They're going back already to the Chumash, going back to the Torah, and we cross to the Yamsuf. So there we're hearing the words of the Yoshve Palashas, the early Plishtim, the early Palestinians. When they heard Nehalta Ba Ozchal Nevekat Shecha, Nehalta Ba Ozchal Nevekat Shecha, that we were crossing through the Yam, and that our destination when we were crossing through the sea, Nehalta Ba Ozchal Nevekat Shecha was to get to Nevekat Shecha, to that place of the Beis Hamikdash, to that place where we would hear the song of Tzion, where every single Jew, no matter how tzibrochen he was, would feel Hashem's love. So it says, Shomu Amim Yegozum, Chil Ochaz Yeshve Peloshes. The Palestinians, the ancient Palestinians, were filled with terror and with fear. What were they so afraid of? Why are the Yishmaelim so afraid of our being in that place? Why is it that the, sec- the second that a Jew heads in that direction, that it's already at the Father? What is it? Why is it that the whole world, the Yishmaelim, 
and and the Bnei Edom, Ha'omer Oru Oru Adi Yisoid, but they can't stand the presence of the Harabais or the Besamekdash. What is it? What is it? One building in the world. What makes them so crazy? So the answer is because the Sitrach or the side of Tuma, the side of impurity, knows. That when a Jew feels loved by Hashem, he could do anything in the world. He's not afraid of not a Yishmaeli. He's not afraid of a Natsri. He's not afraid of anything. Because the Sitrach of the side of impurity knows that when the Jewish people feel that feeling of Ahavas Ailma Haftonu Hashem Lokeinu, the Sitrach knows that when, when the Jewish people, when a Jew is able to remember that song of the Shir Tzion, Shir Lanam Shir Tzion. That the second that you and I remember that song that Hashem loves us, then the whole Golis which began with what? With the feeling of business Hashem was on Hashem. God forbid that Hashem Khalila hates us. Hashem is finished with us. And the Sitra knows that the second that I remember that Hashem loves me, the second that I look up and I see the base and make this that place that's Taikh Rods of Ahava, the place of Shlom Hamalh, the place of David Hamalh, the place of the songs of the Levium of Shir Tzion. The Sitra the side of impurity, knows that it's finished. Because then we become invincible. Because then Golis is done. The second you and I remember that Hashem never ever could stop thinking of me, of us, that second, there's no Plishtim anymore. There's no Palestinians. There's no Malchus of Edom. All of our enemies, the whole world, all the darkness of the world that the Sitra wants, that the other side wants, is finished. All of the impurity, all of the evil in the world disappears in a second. And that's why Rabbi Say, that's why from the very, very beginning, the Torah tells us that the others were trying to excavate the Be'eros, the wells. Now, you all know the Ramban tells us the first well, the first bear, the second bear, each one corresponds to the first base of Mikdash, second base of Mikdash. Who are the ones that closed up those Be'eros? Sitmum, Plishtim, the ancient Palestinians. The ancient Palestinians, Sitmum, Plishtim, to close up that place the wellsprings of Hashem's love, the place of the base of Mikdash, to close up that place because they knew that this Be'er is the source of the first base of Mikdash. The second Be'er, Be'er is the Rosh Hashem's Be'yod Cha'af Kid Ruchi, Be'yod Cha'af Kid Ruchi. Hashem, I'm given over to you because I know that you're given over to me. The Plishtim can't stand that. The world can't stand that. And ever since then, we're digging, we're digging, we're digging. We're still, we're still trying to uncover these bayos in ourselves, these bayos in the world. Now, normally I end with a story, but I want to share with you. And if there's time, maybe I'll tell you a story, but I have to share with you something that I read to the Chavra last Tishabov, here in Eish Kardash. This is from a young woman who was tormented by the people who should have been taking care of her by her parents, particularly by her father, in ways that I can't talk about in public, and nobody should ever know from Chas Khalila. Subsequently, she was married, and her husband continued with the same type of abuse that she was subjected to when she was a little girl that she grew up with. So she wrote a, she wrote a letter. She wrote something to Hashem. I want to share it with you because I think it contains within it all of Tisha B'Av. Just listen, I read it as quickly as I can. God, my brain is hurting. My head is spinning. As I sit here, numb from pain, feel so unreal. Dizziness overtakes as I think about you. I think about your actions, your thoughts, and my limited understanding. I can't comprehend, can't understand, but I don't ask. I don't question why. Why my family? Why my friends? Why the marriage? Why the abuse? I'm not questioning. Not asking for a reason to explain what I've gone through, but I have one question. Abba, Tati, why don't I feel you when I'm being broken, when I'm being shattered, when I'm being crushed? 
Why do you only allow me to feel you when I'm surrounded by the right people, when I'm in the right community, when all is good, when I'm inspired, it's easy to connect to you. When I'm not home, when I'm with friends, you're always on my mind. So why is it that when darkness falls, when the nightmares start and hell begins, that you fall away, that you hide yourself in unknown places? That my trust in you falters. Abba, I want you. I want to feel you. I want to love you. Not only when all is going good, I want to feel you when I'm in a pile of broken bones with no energy to get back up. I want to feel you at night when my world is black, when I'm tossing and turning and the tears flow. I want to know you're besides me when my friends give me 20 minutes notice, when my friend gives me 20 minutes notice before jumping to commit suicide. I want to know you'll catch him. I want your presence to be clear, to be transparent so I can see you. I know you're with me in my every step, but I don't just want the knowledge. I want to know and feel it in my heart and mind. I want to be able to reach for your hand and for you to lead me through. Abba, I've stopped moving backwards. Stop visiting my past. Stop trying to change my past. I'm heading towards the future. I'm no longer angry for what I've gone through. I'm not even angry for where I find myself now. I don't need you to take away the pain. I don't need you to change my home. I'm not asking for you to take revenge on those who have hurt me. Abba, all I'm asking you is to please give me your hand. Hold on tight and never let go so I can feel you and love you without imagining your presence. Give me your hand so we can walk side by side, hand in hand, because walking together in the dark with you is better than walking alone in the light. You hear what she says? Walking, walking together in the dark with you, Hashem, is better than walking alone in the light of this world. So by Shalom Davening, we'll get through, we should get through this last tish above. And to hear the words already by the afternoon of Nachemu, Nachemu, Ami, Yom HaLokeichem. The Tzadikim say that Nachemu, the only way we can be consoled is Ami, Yom HaLokeichem. When you and I can feel, can hear that song of Tzion, we can hear Hashem saying, Ami, you're my nation, you're my people. You think I hate you, you think I've forgotten you. I've never let go of your hand. I'm walking with you every single second. Nachmo, nachmo, ami, yamar lokechem. Hashem is boch, please help us to be strong until that day. That ayin ba'ayin yiru, that our eyes will no longer see, that our zara and that we're going to look outside the window of Yeshiva's Akkot, tell them we're going to see the base of Mikdish, and we're going to sing the songs of David HaMelech, together with David HaMelech and Mashiach, with all of our Yisra, with the glory of our Mikdish, and our Mikdish, and our Mikdish, and our Mikdish.